and welcome back to the channel. So we got a beautiful Saturday morning here. It's not too hot. It's a pretty nice morning. It's been fairly cool. Uh, I've been digging with my drag line a little bit this morning. I uh, was digging in our pond out back and uh, I dug enough that I got enough silt stirred up that I thought I better stop so I'm not killing a fish. So what I'm going to do the rest of the morning here and maybe into the afternoon, we'll see what happens. We'll see how long it takes us. Uh, I'm going to go work on a great all and get that fixed. See why we have an air leak underneath the turntable. But uh, before we head back there, check out the 270. We got it all put back together. Look how nice and tight them tracks are now. Got the new track guards under there. All the new rollers and new sprockets. New idler on this side. She's good to go again. Ready to go back to work and make some money. So uh, next time we mess with the tracks on that, we'll be actually changing rails and all out. So they'll be it'll be time. Anyways, let's head out back and uh, get working on the grade all. See if we can get it fixed up. A little update on the Willamar sprayer. We have been using it. We've sprayed some with it. I just haven't had a chance to get any video of it. But uh, we did spray some beans with it. So it's working well. So let's head back there. Okay, so we're back here at the grade all. What we need to do first is we need to get this plate off the bottom, which kind of acts as a belly pan. It's not real wide, but it is pretty long. And it is fairly thick and it is fairly heavy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to utilize the winch on the Pioneer to drop this belly plate down because I am working by myself today. So I don't really have any help here available to run the Bobcat with a fork extension to shove under that. So I've already got the bolts taken out of it. Uh, well, all but one on each end. So let's get this rigged up and we'll get it dropped. Okay, so with the use of the winch on the Pioneer, I'm going to lower this down, and the way I'm going to do it is I've got a nylon strap under there to this chain here in the front that goes up to the lift points on the grade all. I'm going to pull tight on that strap. That's going to hold up on that pan. And then once I get the bolts out, I'll just gently pull forward, and that pan will fall down. Now, I don't care how it falls down as long as I'm not under there. Uh, I can just roll off to the side if it wants to. This is just to hold it up while I get the bolts out. After that, I don't care. Let gravity do its thing and take it to the ground. And then we'll figure out how to put it back on later. So let's see if we can get it off. All right, so we're in the belly of the beast right now. So this is the underside of the great all. This is a chain-driven undercarriage. It is the same undercarriage as an Inslee drag line or Inslee, Inslee crane. So it's all mechanically driven. There is no hydraulic motor under here or anything that runs the undercarriage. It's driven by a ring gear and a pinion gear up there just like a rear end in a uh, truck or a car. Uh, we've got more big gears under here. So the problem is, is it takes air to shift this undercarriage to make it turn, to make it lock so you can sit still when you dig. And the problem is, is the air lines that come down through the rotary manifold right there on the end of the pinion, those broke off. I'm not quite sure why they broke off. I have no idea why. I don't know if that rotary manifold stuck 
Excavators use a rotary manifold to get the hydraulic oil down to the undercarriage. It's pretty much the same principle, but this uses compressed air. So what I need to do is I need to extract those pieces of broken pipe nipple off, which here's one hanging down right here. I need to get the two pieces out of that, and then I, got, I need to get two new pipe nipples and connect this all back together. And before I do that, I need to figure out if that rotary manifold is stuck. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I've got some extractors in the tool truck. I swapped it out, uh, took the Pioneer back up to the shop, grabbed my tool truck. We get some extractors and see if I can get those pieces out and then we'll start from there. I hate to have to try to pull that rotary manifold out. I really don't wanna mess with that. So let's see if we can do it all from down here. It's gonna be a little tight, but I think we can pull it off. Well, first thing we're gonna do is get some stuff out of our way. And I apologize if the lighting isn't the best up in here, but it's about all I can do. Um, I don't know how else I could get a light up in there. We'll get this looks to be like some sort of little cable clamp off and then this those are 9 16 let's see there it is I'll tell you what having these silicone tool trays from Harbor Freight is wonderful you put your tools in and you can lay them on the ground the whole tool tray, you don't have to worry about your wrenches in the dirt. There we go. Get this ratchet on there if I can reach it. A little bit of grass. <laughs> Funny thing about working out in, the, out in the wilderness, you get grass and everything else. Get this out of the way and then we'll have some room to work in there. Get our extractors up in there. Now the extractors I use, they uh, they have a hex on them. I'll show you here in a second. They, uh, as you loosen, they draw in and they grab whatever you're trying to get out. They work real nice. Get these two bolts out of here real quick been wanting to get this fixed but every time I go to work on it we get a major ring and it runs right down off the off the path of the hit on the hill right underneath the great all and it uh, puddles up it takes it a while to dry out so finally got a chance to work on this oh, we've got that little clip right there for that copper line Finally got a chance where it was kind of dry. I thought, I'm going to take advantage of today and, and work on this. There we go. That's out of the way now. So I've been working on stuff for the new house and new shop. Got the plans drawn up for the house last night. Had my uh, parents help us with that. So that's going to be a go here pretty soon. All right, now I can get up in there to uh, get my extractor in there. Let me grab those and we'll get, get that going. Well, I totally forgot about it, but I've got the Milwaukee Rover light, so I can stick this up in here and get us a little more light. It's not quite the greatest, but let's see if we can find somewhere it'll stick. It's got a magnet on it. Oh, there we go. Uh, that put a little more light on the subject. Okay, now let me move the camera so I can get you in there so we can see to extract those. It's probably as good as we're going to get right there, but you can you can see them. I'm sure my uh, my hands are going to be in the way. Let me get some gloves on here again. I had to run up to the shop and get some batteries for that Milwaukee Rover light. It's a handy light. I totally forgot that I had it stuck in the side box of my truck. All right, I got the gloves on. Okay, it's slimy up in here. But uh, here's our extracting tools. Looks like something the dentist would use for root canal, but like I said, you tighten them in. Oh, I gotta go grab the bigger ones. I thought those were smaller than that. Let me run to the truck real quick. 
All right, we got the proper size now. So let's get that up in there. Apologize if my arm might be in the way of being able to see. But you get the idea of what we're doing here. Don't need an extension, I don't think. Get a ratchet up there. Maybe I can get another arm up there. Oh yeah. Well, look at there. Now, my Uncle Jamie first introduced me to these easy outs or extractors. He's got a snap on set and I used them quite a bit. Look at that, pulled it right out. Well, then I was on Amazon one day and I found this set and I thought, you know what? That'd be a nice set to carry in my tool truck for field work. And, uh, they were highly rated so to get these out you just hold them with pliers and you turn the opposite way and voila they come off and then you drop your extractor in the dirt so it's all dirty for the next one but anyways i found these online and uh, i can't remember what i gave for the set it wasn't too bad so i got the whole set it also came with uh the other style extractors for bolts so you gotta drill a hole first and uh it actually came with the drill bits to drill the holes with. So a pretty nice set. I'll show you here in a little bit. Let's see if we can get like, oh yeah. Usually pipe thread stuff comes out pretty easy, especially if it's on equipment like this. Up in something like this where it's up out of the moisture, out of the dirt. All right, so <laughs> the hard part's over if you ask me. This is what I was worried about, getting these out. So we got those out. So it's kind of interesting. Got my uh, my so uh, soil test done for the house leach field for our septic system. And uh, the soil scientist taught me quite a lot. Uh, we did, we were approved for a traditional gravel and perforated pipe leach field, which was nice. I didn't want to do a mound system or anything like that. But uh, basically, they come, they drill a hole, they look at the dirt, they want sand, silt, and they want a little clay. They don't want the absorption of the liquid from your septic going through the soil too quickly. And uh, ours was perfect. So I'm like, oh, that's a, that's a relief. So we were approved for a leach field. So we can go forward with that on a new house. I'm going to start, as soon as we start doing some real groundwork, I'll start videos on that project. Um, probably going to be using, I'd like to use the older equipment to do that job. Um, I was kind of hoping that I'd have the John Deere 690B excavator by now to do that with, but Mort's not quite done with it on his hog barn project. Nine so we will probably just be using I was going to take the grade all over there and do some stuff with it okay I'm going to take these pipe nipples off now but do some uh, stuff with it and uh, who knows maybe by the time I go to dig the basement I'll have the 690B that would be awesome to dig a basement with an excavator that I actually learned how to run not that exact one but i did learn in a 690 okay so we need to get some pipe nipples we know that for a fact and that'll actually fix this the only thing we got to determine is why this broke off to begin with so but anyways not to change the subject like i said we'll be doing videos of the house building process along the way and my shop too so that'll be pretty cool so Stay tuned for that. All right, so it looks like I'm gonna have to run to the hardware store before we can finish this project. So I need two of these and we'll be good to go. Okay, I'll go find some. So here's that extractor set I was talking about. There's the brand of it. There's the model of it. Came off Amazon. 
I mean, you've got uh, for stripped off bolt heads, uh, grab the bolt head, or this works good for lug nuts. If you have uh, the lug nuts that you've lost the special socket for, or you broke the socket, these will grab it, turn it off your vehicle. Uh, we got drill bits here. We've got the uh, spiral screw extractors for bolts. Uh, and the drill bits are to drill out for these. And then we have our um, extractors like I just used on the great all. Uh, these work very well for pipe fittings. So uh, I really like these. Um, I have used these a couple times. I haven't used these yet and I haven't used the drill bits yet. But uh, so far, anything I've used out of this set has worked. So I'm sure these will work just fine. So find out on Amazon. Pretty nice set, real nice case. This has rode around in the truck for about a year and a half now, and uh, the case is holding up very well. All right, we're going to run to the hardware store and get our pipe nipples we need. Well, before we go to the hardware store, let's throw these in a parts washer and clean them up. Oh, and look at this. The D-Lock Work Brow Coupler for the HX220 Hyundai and the Work Brow progressive link thumb they have arrived so as soon as the 220 gets home off the job it's on we're going to swap these out with this coupler i will be able to run any bucket that we have right now for the 270 or the 200 on the 220 this accepts 80 millimeter pins and 90 millimeter pins and variable pin spacings so it doesn't matter what the pin to pin is, this coupler will grab it, which that's gonna be nice. I can't wait to get that thumb on and play with it. I mean, look at the profile of the thumb there. It's nice and curved. It'll be able to grab logs easier. It's not straight out. I'm really excited about this. So let's get these over to the parts washer. We'll get these cleaned up, see what we got. We got to thread our fittings off, and then we'll head to the hardware store. Well, apparently nobody carries 8-inch black pipe anymore, and I don't know why. You can't even find 8-inch galvanized pipe. You used to be able to find the galvanized if you couldn't find the black. I have been all over from the town of Knox to... Valpo and I found nothing nothing at Home Depot nothing at Lowe's so I decided to come back home and I started digging in the building and believe it or not I found that we had a eighth inch rigid pipe die so I can put threads on my pipe the first thing I need to do is I cut this off a little bit with a grinder because it uh, was a little bent at the end so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to take the rigid pipe cutter i'm going to go ahead and true it up it'll be a little straighter than a grinder cut the cats are eating canned cat food over there and scooting the cans across the floor if you hear a little scraping noise Go ahead and cut this off. I just can't believe you can't find 8th inch pipe anymore. That's ridiculous. You used to be able to find it no problem. I don't know what happened all of a sudden. I don't know if it's just not a standard thing to have anymore or what. So there. Now we can, cut, now we can go ahead and cut some new threads on that. Well, now we can go ahead and cut our threads. Get this, get some oil on this. Get it started on that. I guess I should have done this to start with, but I really thought it would be no problem just to go get some new pipe. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and order some 8th inch pipe fittings, some 8th inch pipe nipples, and stock them here myself, and then I'll have them for next time. Because it's still available online, just can't get it in stores. 
might have a little bit of, a little too thin of oil for cutting these threads, but it's working. Nice thing about the eighth inch pipe die is I don't think it's been used much, so it's nice and sharp. It seems like half and three quarters get worn out pretty quickly. That seems to be more common. Need to deburr that a little bit. Perfect. Wipe that off. See if that threads on there. Oh, look at that. Should have just done this to begin with. All right, now we can go put the grade all back together. Got both of our nipples ready. Get some thread sealing on them and go put it back together. Okay, so let's get started putting this back together. Let's see if we can do a little digging yet this evening. So I got some Teflon sealant on these. Let me get the right angle here to look at it to get it tightened up. Well, where are you going? Hard to see it from down here. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Okay. There we go. I got me a little pipe wrench here that I used to tighten it with. The thing is, is it looks like it's tight up in there, but there's actually quite a bit of room, surprisingly. I just gotta be able to see that airline so I can get the, the fitting face the right way. So this is just airline. It's not like it's high pressure oil. I think this thing only carries like, oh, what is it? 70 80 pounds of air pressure it's not much i mean all this does all the air basically does on this machine is shift this undercarriage for forward and reverse and sets the digging dog so it'll lock and stay still that's all the air does on this machine it's the only reason for the air compressor okay that one looks good right there i'll get the other one get some uh some teflon on the threads on it Get it up in there. All right. Get that smeared around a little bit. There we go. Might be a little tougher with that one in a way. I don't know. I mean, they got a pretty nice gap between them. Oh, look at there. That one fell right in. As long as the fittings don't hit when they... Oh, good. The fittings don't hit when they come around. I actually have to try to get a wrench on this one. Let me get this one tightened up and then we'll move on. So I got her strap back in here that's supposed to hold our lines. So I'm working on getting the bolts back in it. I had to take the clamp apart. Let's see if I can get this up in here without hitting the camera. There we go. Got two bolts we got to put back in the bar itself. Now the way these work on the excavators, 
the head of the rotary manifold actually sticks up behind the boom on a Hitachi excavator and a lot of the other ones. And then there's like a 3 8 thick bar that holds that head from turning and the manifold actually bolts into the track frame or slew ring of the excavator and the body itself stays still but the head turns at the top and that's where your brake lines hook up your k strain lines for your track motors and then your four big track hoses or travel hoses all run down through there and go down to the, tr the track motors and when you hit the pedals the oil goes through there and feeds them and uh, that also allows the excavator to swing so the myth of only being able to swing an excavator so many times one way is totally a myth unless it is an a old let's see what were they some of the old warner swayzes they only swung three quarters of the way around some of the old chain swing gray dolls only swung part way around so they haven't always swung a full 360. there was a time when they only went so far because they actually used a big roller chain and some cylinders to swing them so fun little fact there They couldn't quite figure out how to make that rotary manifold and make it work. It's actually been a really nice day to work on this because it hasn't been too hot. It hasn't been too humid. It's just been a real enjoyable day. But next week, next week, oh, that's the wrong size, isn't it? Oh, it's half inch. Next week, it's supposed to be hot again. And we're actually uh, on a fertilizer shed project. We're going to pour some concrete. The uh, concrete contractor talked, us, talked my Uncle Jamie into doing it so that they could get back to Nebraska and work on some other projects. So uh, we're going to do some concrete work. Something a little different. We are going to do all the concrete work for my new house. We're going to do the basement and uh, all the floors, shop floor, basement floor, garage floor. So I'm pretty excited about that. Something a little different. All right, now I can hook some hoses up. Eighths, I think it was. Yep. All right. So these hoses are pretty much trained to go where uh, they were used to being. I was worried I had to cut some off to uh, put new threads on. Oh, let me move the camera a little bit here. Sorry you couldn't see. Well, that's about as good as it's going to get right there. I was afraid that I was going to have to uh, do something different here, but we got plenty of hose. I guess I didn't cut as much off to get a good spot in the pipe as I thought I did. I just got to determine why these broke to begin with. I have to get me a crow's foot up in here. Wrangler Star said crow's feet are junk. That's why he threw all his in the trash in one video. I'm like, you haven't mechanicked enough, pal, if you haven't used a crow's foot. Can you really take advice from anybody that runs around without their shoes on? Yeah, throw them crow's feet in the trash. You'll never use those. That's a bunch of crap. I use my crow's feet quite a bit. I even have some custom-made crow's feet that I built for the excavators. First time you got to change a track hose down behind the boom and you don't have an inch and a half crow's foot, 
you're gonna be throwing a fit. Get this copper line back where it was. That's an interesting deal. I think this copper line actually just squirts grease on the pinion gear. So we just gotta get it poked back up in there. And get it reshaped to where it was. There we go. Get close to that gear. That'll work. That's how it was. All right, I think we're done under here other than putting a belly pan back on, but we're not going to do that until we actually try it and see what happens. Well, I'm just finishing up cleaning up tools here, and I figured I'd show you this real quick. This is the silicone tool tray that I was talking about earlier in the video. I love these things. These are great for any kind of service work outside. Um, I mean, it keeps your tools up out of the dirt. Uh, they're nice in the fall for working on the corn heads on the combines. You just throw this down, you throw all your bolts, all your tools, all that in it. You're not rummaging through the corn stalks and corn leaves looking for tools. Uh, just a great deal to have. Uh, there are a few different companies that make these, but I picked this one up at uh, Harbor Freight. I actually got three other sizes. There's one that's about this big, and then there's a smaller one. But... Uh, Really cool to have. Nice thing is they fold up real nice. You can put them in a side box. You can put them in, you can probably poke them in the bottom of one of them triangle boxes. But with mine, I just simply throw it behind the truck seat. All right, let's see if we can get her started and uh, see what happens. So here's the top of that rotary manifold right here. It does have a grease fitting. So we're gonna give it some grease. Maybe it just needs a little lube. Maybe it was turning too hard. And that's what caused our issue. Looks like there was a little moisture or something in there, but they got good grease going in there. So uh, one of these is your, well, this is your swing motor. And then this is your propulsion motor that makes the machine travel. So, and this is the gearbox up here, this whole piece here that is for your swing and for your travel. Pretty cool how it's all set up. Well, let's see if it'll start. Usually out of all my antique stuff, this old girl is probably the most dependable on starting. set up i'm gonna go swing it i want to see what it does i can't be two places at once and plus it's probably not safe to be under here so the camera will do the trick for this seen in that video was something that I really didn't care for. Uh, you can see that one uh, length of pipe bowing under there. That is because that rotary manifold is not turning. It must be stuck. So we're going to have to determine why it's stuck. It might have a seal caught in it somehow. Uh, we're just going to have to take it apart, take the top off, and see what we got going on in there. Maybe it's just got a little rust or something holding it up. Maybe we can break it free and it'll it'll spin the way it's supposed to be. But uh, that ain't going to work. That's just going to end up breaking them, them uh, pipe nipples off again. So let's see what we can do with it. Well, I'm not exactly sure what we're about to get into here. Never had one of these apart. Uh, it would help if I had a battery for my impact. I know that. I got battery this time. Looks like we got some brass rings here. Pop these off and see what's under them. Get 
something to pray on him with. Maybe it's something simple. Maybe it's not. got books on this thing but they're not very helpful I don't know what we got going on here some sort of shims there's one It's all just rusted up. Maybe. Looks like there's a bunch of junk in there. I bet that's what's wrong with it. I bet you're supposed to take that plate off first. I'll figure it out and I'll let you know. Well, I believe the rotary manifold was just stuck because I took those brass plates off. And I kept tapping on it gently, gently, and it started moving. It started tapping down. It took quite a bit of tapping, and it started moving. So I've just been working it up and down, keeping some WD-40 around it. It's getting easier and easier to move. So I'm hoping we got her figured out. I found a grease cirque down farther, and I've pumped grease in that a couple times. Like so. So I think we're getting somewhere. And I did find that uh, the grease just free flowed out of these holes. If I put bolts in them, the grease seems to get to where it should be under the seal. So. I think we're gaining. I want to play with it a little longer. Yeah, see, I'm actually getting grease where I think it should be. It's coming around the seal. Oops. Yeah. So, I definitely think it was just froze up taking a wild guess but mechanically in my head that seems like it would make sense so let's see what happens I'll get it all reassembled all right let's give it another try I think that's freed up now So I swung it just a little bit and it doesn't look like anything moved. So now I'm going to go ahead and swing it quite a bit and see what happens. to me like everything's working the way it should under there so uh let's go do a little bit of digging i know you've all been waiting the whole video to see me move a little dirt with the great all so uh let's go play around for a little bit and right, we got a little bit of sun left so uh let's go see what we can do we'll go do uh we'll go track past where we're at now in there somewhere and uh we'll taper that back a little bit and see how it goes
that little bit of digging right there. I didn't do a whole lot. Um, I actually want to do this all the way through so that I can dig more with my drag line sit a little farther back and not drag my drag cable up over the edge. Um, so I need to move that little pile of concrete before I can go on. I need to dig this out some more right here and then uh, start moving back this way and then we're going to go back that way and basically make a big oval shape is what kind of mom wanted so we'll see what we end up with when we're all done but uh, if you've made it this far through this video i want to thank each and every one of you for getting me to the 32,000 subscriber point uh we hit 32,000 subscribers uh last friday i was just i couldn't believe it when it happened so uh thank you for all the uh comments thank you for all the views i really appreciate it and it uh, is keeping the channel growing so uh, without you i wouldn't have a channel so thank you very much um like i said mentioned a few times throughout the video that there's a lot of stuff coming i got my whole house and shop deal going on so there's going to be videos of that so there's going to be a lot of exciting things happening and once we get moved into the new house, once we get the new shop put up, uh, I want to concentrate on doing more live videos so I can interact with you even more. Um, I know there's a lot of questions in the comments uh, that I could answer in a live video, and I think that would be a lot easier. I do read all the comments. I apologize. I can't get back to all of them because things have been crazy lately with the fertilizer shed project. Uh, and all the other work that we've had scheduled. So it's been pretty busy, but I've been trying to manage to keep videos to keep everybody in, entertained. Like today I took Saturday and I said, I'm gonna make a video this weekend. And uh, the grade all is a subject of that video. This thing's been down for almost a month now and I wanted to get it back together. So uh, we got it back together, got it operational again. Yeah, we have a few oil leaks, like the oil uh, cylinder that telescopes the boom. I knew that before that it leaked, so I got to fix that. But at least the rotary manifold's not stuck anymore. The airlines are all fixed. Um, eventually, I want to do some bushing work to the, the bucket on this machine. You heard it started creaking a little bit when we were digging. Uh, as soon as I get my new shop, a lot of things like that will be able to be addressed. Um, not that I can't work on in our shop now. It's just that we got to keep our shop open for the farm equipment and the excavating equipment that we make our daily livelihood with. So uh, once I get my shop up and going, then I can leave a project tore apart for a little bit and not have to worry about being rushed out the door. So the, the, the projected size of the shop, what I'm trying to go for is a 40 by 60 by 16. So that gives me a lot of room for activities. Uh, when we get to the new place, I want to do the live videos, answer questions through live videos. I think that'd be so much easier. So uh, just bear with me here. Uh, some good stuff's coming. So uh, I know the other channel, I started Dirt, uh, dirt Grain Steel Off-Road. I really haven't done much with that because I haven't had time to go on any side-by-side -side trips. And whatever we do with the side-by-side, -side, I usually throw on this channel. So uh, that channel, it's a free floater right now. Maybe we'll do something later with it. I don't know. So uh, let's just keep rolling with the Dirt Grain Steel, the original one that we've been watching, and the other channel, whatever. So, uh, but anyways, thank you for everything. I really appreciate it. We'll see you all in the next one.